Good morning, everyone. This is a five minutes with languages and culture staff. And my guest today is Gianluca Alimeni, lecturer in Italian studies. Um, Gianluca, best would be if you tell us about yourself a little bit and what you do. Something very quickly about myself. I came to Australia when I was about 18. I've done all sorts of little work and jobs to begin with, but then I started doing teaching at um, COASET, which is the Italian Association of, of Welfare, and I was actually teaching young children um, Italian, and I did that for a little while. Then my teaching sort of expanded to um, government courses, in other words, insert courses uh, as part of the educational curriculum in New South Wales. But then, of course, as I was doing my degree here in uh, New South Wales, in Wollongong University, I started doing tutoring at Wollongong University. Mm. And then, uh, basically, I never left university since. Okay, but how long have you been with Macquarie then? Well, I've been with Macquarie since 2002. So it's almost 20 years that I've been here at Macquarie. Wow. And has teaching of Italian changed over time or the need um, maybe of the students? The focus has probably changed slightly and there's, there is also a slightly different population, shall I say, of students that would have come to Macquarie University compared to the generic student that I was getting at um, Wollongong University. Wollongong University students appear to be more focused on learning Italian so they could then teach it at some other stage in the school system. Um, Macquarie University, it's a lot more diverse and there's a lot more people doing for the pleasure or for other reasons for learning Italian. Gianluca, mm -hmm. what do you like best about your job? Um, generally speaking, um, it's, it's still creative, even though we teach the same things year in and year out. Um, it's good to see how people um, can actually progress. Um, that it's no one class is the same as the previous ones. Each year, they seem to be slightly different. There's always new challenges and new ways of dealing um, with students. And, um, but most importantly, is the rewarding part of seeing something that you teach and seeing being applied um, correctly. Um, I know that for a fact that you told us about it, you, you do use technology in your class. Do you think technology has changed how we learn languages these days? Um, look, obviously, um, the years of using um, overhead projectors is long gone. Uh, possibly the majority of students we see in class today would not even know what an overhead projector is. Um, when I first started teaching Italian at a Macquarie University, in one corner of the room, there was a stand with a giant TV and it had three different video recorders, VHS, Beta and Numatic. Um, and that's prehistoric stuff for today's standard. So obviously the technology has has changed um, and also has made our work a little bit more um, difficult sometimes. Students are these days are far more accustomed to have results immediately. So they, you know, email it's sent now. They expect the results to be back in, you know, in five minutes, which yeah. is gone today where you would send a, a letter and it would take three days just for somebody to actually receive it. In your free time, when you're not teaching Italian, uh, you told me you teach other things and sometimes not even humans. Um, well, yes, that, that is true. Um, obviously, teaching has been a, a big part of, of my life. Um, so I am, shall I say, experienced in riding motorcycles. So I'm also a motorcycle instructor. Um, and I spend a few weekends teaching people how to ride motorcycles, both from the beginner's level and it's mostly through the licensing process. So that is one aspect. The other aspect that I've been doing is um, dog training. So not now, but in the past, I've, um, I was sort of uh, teaching my dog, I was training my dogs and I was 
competing in New South Wales in obedience and agility classes. And therefore, I was then a, an instructor with the German Shepherd Dog Lake. In fact, I was the um, lead instructor for the branch for, for a few years as well. Do you own a dog, dog at the moment? At the moment, yes, I do have two dogs, um, two dogs and a chicken. I got two dogs and um, I had, they're not as well trained as the dog that I used to have. I haven't had the time to spend on them to make them, but they're still much better behaved than the average dog that I see on the, on the footpath. Mm. Gianluca, if anyone has seen you around before this video, um, they probably noticed that you always wear bright colours, that you're always well dressed. That's how you are our kind of department fashionista. Yeah, thanks for that. Look, it's, um, yeah, it's, it started as, as, as a hobby of mine to, to have something um, that will sort of stand out a, a little bit more. So I started simply by wearing different um, ties every day. So now I have a co collection of about 150 ties, but, um, but on top of that, then sort of things become a little bit more engaging and uh, with different colors. And now it's been, it's a bit of my trademark. So if I do wear something which is just brown or gray, then people look at me funny the other way around because they're so used to see me in colorful things. Like, what is wrong with you, John Luca, right? Uh, yeah, it, basically, yes. What's wrong with you? They, aren't you feeling well today? Um, and yes, I had, I had in the past uh, students, but I had in the past even members of staff that were making bets on what colour we'll be wearing the next day. <laughs> I um, guess it becomes a, you know, a discussion point in class anyway, rather than just simply grammar and, and language. Does that have to do a little with your Italian genes? I mean, Italians are famous for their sense of um, fashion. Well, yes. Look, you know, I was born in Florence, and Florence is the birth capital of fashion. So Gucci, Pucci, and Fiorucci were all created originally in Florence. Um, obviously, there's many other designers, but you know, that's just to mention a few. My wife is from Rome. So we really don't get away a great deal from not wearing things properly, uh, properly in, in my in my view anyway, sort of colourful or you know fashionable. Mm. We're coming out of the lockdown hopefully soon. So what is the one thing that you can't wait to do once we are allowed to do more things that currently? Um, Going back on my motorcycles and go riding around with my friends and um, I've got a little boat, but I still haven't been able to take it out because all I got near me is the Nepean River. So, yeah, and lockdown comes out, I'll be on my boat fishing. Gianluca, grazie for this Thank interview. <laughs> Thank you. No worries.